The nuclear super aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, America's second powerful fist. By the beginning of the 21st century, America realized that it does not promise to be an easy one. Fast-growing China and a resurgent Russia are clearly going to challenge our country as the world's absolute leader. And the best way to preserve the status quo is still to have the best weapons in the world to dictate our will anywhere in the world. And one of the most effective weapons for such purposes is aircraft carriers. And thank God, here we, the US, have no equal. There are 10 such formidable machines on constant combat duty. On May 31, 2017, the first aircraft in a new series, the Gerald R. Ford, was commissioned to replace the aircraft carrier Enterprise, which ended its glorious 51-year service in December 2012. Because of its technical characteristics that make this ship much more dangerous to enemies than its predecessors, the aircraft carrier Gerald R. Ford has come to be called a nuclear super aircraft carrier. And now the second enormous mega machine of the series, the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, named in honor of the 35th President of the United States, who served during World War II as a commander of PT Boat 109, rolled off the slipway at Northrop Grumman Shipbuilding in Newport News on December 7, 2019. The ship was christened by President John F. Kennedy's daughter, Carolyn Bouvier Kennedy, who broke a bottle of champagne on her steel side. In this review, we'll tell you about this truly unique super aircraft carrier so you can see its power and therefore the power of your country, the United States. Its displacement is over 100,000 tons. That's the weight of a train of 833 fully laden wagons. Its length would be 24 kilometers. The working length of the super aircraft carrier is 1,106 feet, 337 meters. The width is 134 feet, 41 meters, and the draft is 39 feet, 12 meters. This is the size of a floating airfield the size of three soccer fields. It allows the John F. Kennedy to not only carry any fighters in service in our country, but also those that may appear in the future. In size and configuration of the hull, the shape and location of the superstructure, the new aircraft carrier looks similar to the USS Nimitz it will replace. The shape and dimensions of the superstructure were optimized to reduce the aircraft carrier's radar visibility. For this purpose, some of the rooms, including the crew quarters, 70 seats, were moved into the hull. The mast is made with radio-absorbing composite materials. The superstructure itself is now placed behind the board line, closer to the stern. But such a hulk made of high-quality steel has to be somehow pushed to get it to any point of the world's oceans. Two state-of-the-art nuclear reactors, A1B, serve as such pushers. Modern is not an epithet. The reactors are capable of producing a quarter more electricity than their counterparts on previous generations of ships. The capacity of each is 700 megawatts. This is by far the most powerful type of nuclear reactor ever installed on ships. Their energy is enough to propel a super aircraft carrier to 35 miles per hour, 56 kilometers an hour. Once loaded with nuclear fuel, the John F. Kennedy can sail autonomously for 50 years virtually her entire service life. The old reactors required refueling every 13 years. Altogether, 1,400 megawatts of power will be enough not only to drive four huge ship propellers, but to satisfy the power demand of all shipboard equipment, including four electromagnetic catapults, as well as laser and electromagnetic armament. By the way, the power of electric generators has increased 2.5 times more than the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz. Well, what the super aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy can present to enemies as the main argument for the rightness of the USA? It'll carry up to 100 aircraft, including F-35C fighter bombers, F-A-18EF Super Hornet attack fighters, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye long-range radar detection aircraft, and MH-60RS multi-role helicopters. That's more than any country in the world, with the exception of China or Russia, can field. But it's only one aircraft carrier, more precisely, a super aircraft carrier. At the same time, thanks to the new electromagnetic catapults, it provides 160 sorties per day and for a short time, 220 sorties. This is 15% more than the old steam catapults provided. And that's taking into account that the John F. Kennedy has four catapults, while the old type aircraft carriers have five. 
To provide uninterrupted takeoff of aircraft on combat missions, the ship has three aircraft elevators and 18 refueling complexes, allowing to refuel all the aircraft on board in the shortest possible time. The use of electromagnetic catapults instead of steam ones, as well as the modernization of the braking system, the so-called aero finisher, significantly improved takeoff and landing controllability while eliminating extreme stress on pilots and aircraft, and in general, increased the safety of deck operations. In addition, the abandonment of steam equipment significantly reduced the intensity of corrosion of ship systems. Have you ever noticed how, when an airplane takes off from the old aircraft carriers, a cloud of steam was rising on the deck, which made everything around it rusty? Now this won't happen. But the aircraft carrier is able not only to strike powerfully, but also to defend effectively. It'll be armed with two RIM-162 SM medium-range missile launchers, manufactured by Raytheon. Each launcher consists of eight containers of four ship-to-air missiles with a semi-active radar homing head. These weapons are designed to counter high-speed and maneuverable anti-ship missiles at ranges of up to 50 kilometers. The RIM-116 surface-to-air missile launchers, co-developed by Raytheon and DOBGT of Germany, are designed for ships close in range defense and can hit high-speed targets at ranges of 500 to 10 kilometers with a minimum target height of 4 meters. The ship's missile armament is complemented by six high-speed automatic cannons, two Phalanx 20x102 mm and four M2 12.7 mm. In addition, it's possible to install laser or railtronic weapons on the aircraft carrier. For timely detection of enemy targets on the aircraft carrier, there's a multifunctional radar based on three active antenna arrays with electronic rotation without any mechanical movement, replacing up to five ordinary specialized radars and about 10 of their antennas. The three antenna groups are offset by 120 degrees to cover a full 360-degree circle. The radar is capable of detecting advanced anti-ship missiles with stealth characteristics and simultaneously supporting all existing as well as future defensive missiles by guiding missiles and illuminating targets. And that's not counting the fact that aircraft carriers don't sail alone, but as part of an aircraft carrier strike group, which, in addition to the aircraft carrier itself, includes 8 to 10 support ships, cruisers, destroyers, frigates, multi-purpose nuclear submarines. In addition to this formidable armada is added several support vessels. Maximum automation of all shipboard equipment has made it possible to reduce the aircraft carrier's crew by a third. The standard configuration of an aircraft carrier implies 2,500 to 2,700 crew members, about 2,500 people of the air group and 70 people of the staff command. Total, 5,070 to 5,270 people. The John F. Kennedy, on the other hand, accommodates 4,660 people. That saves $4 billion for the crew. And these 4,660 people will be placed on the super aircraft carrier in incomparably better conditions than on the old aircraft carriers. Taking into account the experience of their operation, the designers have made significant changes in the configuration of interior spaces. It became more spacious and comfortable. As we said, the John F. Kennedy nuclear-powered super aircraft carrier was launched on December 7, 2019, but this is not the end of the work on it. There's still a lot of assembly and adjustment work to be done. After that, they'll be testing and then hand over to the fleet in 2022. After that, adjustment, testing, crew training again, and only in 2024, the super aircraft carrier will be put into operation. And the ceremony of officially laying the aircraft carrier took place on August 22, 2015, although the first cutting of steel for the ship took place on February 25, 2011. Long? But so is the technology super sophisticated, which no other country in the world has. In conclusion, the entire series of aircraft carriers will consist of 10 ships. Complete replacement of old aircraft carriers will occur by 2058. No other country has such a complex and ambitious program, but its implementation will allow the U.S. to continue to be the greatest country and ruler of the seas.